תומאס ואמילי, מה שלומכם? בסדר. She's pretty good, very, very good. Making progress, recovering. Um, but yeah, the rest, of us are, the rest of us are broken now. Could you ever imagine that we would be sitting here talking, Emily, beside you, smiling? No, no. At, you know, at some point it was... Um, she was gone completely, so... At that point there was no, no future with us. And when she came back? Uh, yeah, a miracle, absolute miracle. But uh, it, it did come with a lot, a lot of guilt for the rest of them. Um, it's just something you have to get on with. Um, but yeah, you hope, you pray that they'll come out as well. So if now the families of the hostages that are still there are watching you, what do you have to tell them, to say to them? Stay strong. Stay, uh, stay positive. I know it's very, very hard, but uh, this is proof that it's possible. It can come back. You know, I'd given, all, I'd given up all hope, really. And uh, it can happen. It can happen. אמילי, אני רואה שזה מרגש אותך, כשאבא מתרגש. מה? כשהוא מתרגש. No, I'm good so far. I'm good so far. אבא רגיש. אבא רגיש. היו ביניכם שיחות, או אבא, איפה היית? Why did it take so long for you to come? Yeah. Well, thankfully, that... question in my head or that doubt that guilt that in my head was uh quashed within a second of meeting her because um she kept looking at me and uh eventually i said what's the matter and she said i thought you were dead i thought you were kidnapped one or the other that's what she saw on her way out of the kibbutz she saw people who she knew killed on the ground murdered and she saw other members of the kibbutz being taken away. So obviously, not obviously to me at the time, that's the conclusion she came to. But I thought that, yeah, she was down deep in the dark tunnels, going, where is my dad? Where is he? But uh, she presumed I was killed or captive. So that was a great relief. And what all these weeks, all these days, when you, when you talk about it, Does she still have questions that you don't know how to answer about that time? To be, to be honest, no. Um, she doesn't say a lot about it. Really? Um, she actually has code words for uh, Gaza, terrorists. She has lots and lots of code words. It's, it's, uh, what's, uh, what's Zaytim? Mechablim. Mechablim. Any food or item that she doesn't like, she transfers that word. That's her code. Why do you have codes? Why do you have codes for certain words? Because sometimes I don't want to say them. Yeah, she doesn't even want to say it. As soon as she came out, she was still in the pajamas that she wore when she went out. Two months. They gave her a pair of trousers and a, another top to put on top. And uh, as soon as we got to the hospital, she ripped it off and went straight to the bin. Just threw them in the bin. She didn't want anything, anything from them. No. 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 She was with men all the time. 
Is there mainly three guys? Nahon, come on, Shim Nayashama. Bavaita Shlishi, Aya is a lawyer that Sheva. Emily has healed extremely fast, like I say, resilience of children. Um, for the rest of us, it's much slower. Um, I'm okay because I've got a purpose by giving interviews, by going traveling to America or whatever. That gives me something to focus on. Uh, Natalie and Aidan, my two older kids, They've lost their mother. Um, no kiss. No kiss, yeah. Shot. Shot on that day. And so they're still grieving for her and coping with all this that's going on. How do you think she has changed in a matter that she won't be the same again? She was immediately a bit more mature. That's for sure. And uh, I've heard that from a lot of other parents. Uh, it was a quite a shift in maturity. Um, she has, she's insecure. Uh, if she's having a shower, I have to sit outside. Um, she wouldn't have a shower in a little confined room with me somewhere else in the house. I've, I've got to be there. Um, yeah, she always wants to know that the door is locked, that the shutters are down. She wants to be secure, feel secure in, a, in her environment, in the house. My biggest worry, no matter how well she seems to be doing and really is doing, my biggest worry is that something along the line triggers her and something pops up. And that could be anything, anywhere. Um, so yeah, we pray that that doesn't happen and that she just recovers fully and continues with the rest of her life. And the nights? Every night I'd ask her, you know, did you dream? Sorry, the next morning I'd ask her if she dreams. And she usually would say, no, all good. Um, she had one good recurring dream where she escaped from Hamas and ran back to Barry. Uh, that happened quite a few nights. but. Uh, yeah, normally uh, at the beginning I was watching her in her sleep and uh, if she sort of started crunching her face, I knew she was having a bad dream and just break her out a bit. She sleeps alone? No, she sleeps either in my room or in my bed. I can't even, I can't even go upstairs without her following me. Uh, she doesn't let you? Yes. Uh, yeah, she's still afraid. I'll take a, I'll take long, long time to get over. She's talking about the people that she left there. Yeah, when when I got the news that uh, Yossi Shurabi was killed and Itai Sviyski, um thankfully she knows that the Hamas lie and lie and lie. And so she, even though she heard it officially, unofficially, she said, I, I don't believe it. They, they lie, they lie. So I've left her with that thought. But uh, you know how kids are with all their WhatsApps, I'm sure she's realized that they're gone. Wow. Yeah. She knew she had her birthday? Apparently, yes, because like I say, I believed she was down in the tunnels because that's the safest place. That's where I thought they would treasure their hostages. But no, she, from the time she was kidnapped, they ran to one house. I don't know if it was a complete house or a bombed up house, but some kind of shelter. Next morning, they ran to another house. Next morning, they ran to another house, presumably keeping one step ahead of the IDF. They only had... Um, for entertainment or to pass the time, uh, clafim or drawing. Yeah. Two months of that yeah. in a very tight, confined space is eventually going to wear off. So yeah, I'm sure they messed around in their head, yeah. but 
very quietly. Uh, and Uskut. Be quiet. Or I'll kill you with this knife. To an eight year old child as she was then. Barbarians. Did she tell you who was the person that took care of her all this time in captivity? Uh, Raya, uh, the mother of her friend. Yeah, Raya totally looked after her, really like uh, her own child. Made sure that they both had food. She bathed her, you know, just in a, a bowl, a basin of warmish water and a rag. Uh, Raya cut her hair basically to make it more manageable. They met Emily and Raya? Since Emily and Raya, yeah, of course, yeah. They yeah. met soon and they as, talked? Yeah, as yeah, soon as we could, yeah. They, they all had fun. He and uh, Emily went off to the side, away from the grown-ups. Uh, yeah, laughed, giggled, probably had memories and recollections, talking about it all. But, uh, smiling, happy. אני יכולה לשאול אותך שאלה ממש מוזרה? כן. מוזרה, אני מודה. היה שם משהו שהצחיק אותך בכל הזמן שהיית שם? כן. מה? אני לא זוכרת, אבל אני זוכרת שאני והילה כל הזמן צחקנו מדברים כאלה. Thinking, you know, always about the, the families that, that, can't, that can't have this happy moment yet. Mm. And I'm, I want to ask you if you have any insights about what they should do to prepare to the case when their loved ones will come mm. back home. Uh, a very important thing was that I brought our dog. That was crucial because, like I say, in my head, I thought she would have some resentment towards me, you know, not protecting her for all that time. Um, so the dog was blameless, guilt, without guilt. He's just pure, pure love. So uh, even if she might have gone a little bit of a cold shoulder to me, she had, she had Johnsy, the dog. So you're saying get a dog? Saying if you have any pets, even a parrot, I don't know, bring it along to the hospital when, the, when they get changed over. It's quite crucial. Try and think whatever favorite food they want, favorite toy, anything, just to immediately reconnect them with home, because it's been a long time. Um, they're gonna be starving. She was, I say ravenous, like a horse, but because her stomach had shrunk so much, we had to be careful. She wanted to eat like a mountain of food. We had to like, no, 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 a little bit later, a little bit later, till now she's good. Now she can eat like a horse. <laughs> you feel strong enough after what you've been going through, after what Emily has been going, going yeah. through? Yeah, uh, mentally and physically, it, it really takes a lot out of you. Um, uh, when it all started, I was like 65 kilograms. By the time they released Emily, I was 52. And that was a massive weight loss. Yeah. Um, I've recovered, got my little belly back. <laughs> uh, took a lot of hard work. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of chocolate, which I don't have a sweet tooth, but my body said eat chocolate get the calories inside, a um, few beers, uh, but that doesn't put on weight, and loads of meals. Some say that the price that Israel needs to pay for releasing the hostages mm -hmm. has a high cost. Uh, yeah, the Hamas are going to want as much as they can for every single hostage that they've got. Um, We'll give them prisoners back. And a lot, in, uh, a lot of times in the papers it says, uh, you know, a hostage deal. It's not a hostage deal. It's a, it's a swap of hostages for convicted prisoners. Murderers. Yeah, some cases, yeah. Some of them very cruel. Very cruel and like we, let, we, uh, we already let one 
very important guy go and he's, he's now the leader of them. Yeah. So that's, that's a very, very big risk. But um, that's why we have to completely destroy Hamas from the top. Some say to we the bottom. can't really do that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, we can make it extremely weak and uh, simply not allow them back into Gaza, ever. But I'm just trying to understand. So what you're saying is that Israel should release, no matter what's the amount of the prisoners, the With, murderers that she has, in order reason. to get everyone back. Within reason, of course, yeah. What is within reason? Well, they couldn't turn around and say, we want every single Palestinian prisoner in jail. Well, they can. They can say it, but they're not going to get it. Um, you know, talk reasonable numbers. So how comfortable do you feel talking to me about you know, the numbers and about what Israel should do when your daughter, who was in captivity for so long, is sitting next to you and she's fine and she's healthy and she's okay. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, in my head, at the time when she was uh, captive, I knew that the IDF had to do everything in its powers to destroy Hamas, primarily, and to do whatever they could to find and uh, retrieve the hostages and uh, within that thought process I realized that she could be bombed, could be shot by friendly fire um, that was a price that in my head I could say yeah okay so long, so long as we destroy Hamas, so long as the government and the military finish the job they've started out to do. If not, everyone who's died, hostages, all the massacres, all the terrible things that happened is pointless. Pointless, a waste of time, effort and lives. We have to finish the job completely. And I, I really don't care what the world says. I really don't care. It doesn't matter what I say, they'll think whatever they want. But now, we have to finish it. They started it and we will finish it. Thomas, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks a lot.